Have you ever heard of the tea to butter watercolor comparison? It's honestly something I've always hated. I could never get it to make sense for me, so I've avoided teaching it. But recently I've had an epiphany and I cannot wait to share with you what I have learned because values with watercolor are the most important thing you can understand. And this is a great way to learn how to get those values in your watercolor paintings. So I would like it if you followed along with this lesson, we are going to grab our watercolor paints. I'm using my Daler Rowney 48 watercolor pan set and my Bao Hong cotton paper. I love this paper. I'm also using a Princeton round size eight brush. The first thing you want to do is choose one color that you're going to work with. I'm using Quinn Magenta. I wet my brush. I pick up the typical amount of paint that I usually do. And then I'm swirling it around on this empty space on my palette, on my mixing tray area. Often when people are making this comparison, they talk about consistency how the water and the pigment feels like tea, how it feels like coffee and milk. And I can see where they're coming from when they get to the cream and the butter, but to me, it did not make sense. Tea, milk, coffee, those things are going to feel the same on my palate. And so I've avoided teaching this for forever. But what I came to realize for me makes the most sense is actually the first three deal more with opacity. So for tea, when we want to get that really light value of color, we need to add more water, lots and lots of water. And it is similar to how tea is very clear, transparent with a little bit of color and very light. Now, the difference between tea and coffee, you can still see through them, but it is more opaque. It still feels like they're the same consistency but there's a difference in color and the ability to see through them. So we're going to add just a little bit more pigment to the watery mixture that we've created for the tea. And then milk, which is our medium value, is a lot less transparent than coffee, but still has that very liquidy, free flowing consistency. So for me, all three of those are so similar in feeling and consistency. I think of them as how opaque they are, how see-through they are. Then we get to cream. There is a significant difference between milk and cream. I'm picking up a ton of pigment from my watercolor palette. I am mixing it into my mixture and it is thick. It is heavy. I can feel my brush moving through this consistency and it feels like cream. It is a lot more opaque. You cannot see through it. It is dark, but it is not chunky, thick, dark. It is watery, consistency, thick, dark, if that makes sense. Kind of, you know, like cream, <laughs> which then brings us to butter. So because I have a damp, clean brush that is not very watery and I have been using my paint palette already, so it's nice and primed, I'm using the paint directly from the well and I am painting it onto the paper. So this is very thick, like spreading butter. You have a lot of that rough texture and I left some of that white space to just give you a very good visual of what that thick, creamy, buttery texture feels like. Now you might be thinking, okay, I'm really hungry, but what does this have to do with watercolor? <laughs> well, this is an exercise to get you to know how to create the right consistencies to create values. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. So the next exercise I'm going to have you do is to create a very long rectangle with five spots. We're first going to create our very light consistency of T. And this is our lightest value. It is the lightest value of our Quinn Magenta color. And we're going to overlap into the next square just a little bit so that we can get a nice blend. We're going to add a little bit more pigment until we get our coffee value. So it's a little bit darker, a little bit more opaque, and then we overlap it a little bit and add milk. Milk is just even more dark, but not quite opaque yet until we get into cream. So then we'll add even more pigment to our mixture and we're working very quickly so that everything is still wet. So we get a very nice gradient from light to dark. 
So we're continuing to add in our cream now, which is very heavy, but still really movable. The butter consistency is when it is hard to move around and very, very thick. So again, we're taking it straight from the palette. I'm not even mixing it on my tray, not adding any extra water to it. And then we're adding that to the very end. And now we've got a beautiful gradient seeing light, medium, and dark values of our color. Values in watercolor are the most important thing you can understand because watercolor is worked light to dark. Once you get rid of your light values, you cannot bring them back except through other means outside of watercolor, other mediums like gouache or acrylics. So if we can maintain our light values and learn how to paint them first, adding upward our medium and dark values on top of that, our watercolor will just transform. It'll look amazing. So I'm doing a really quick exercise with you here with some trees. If you want more information about this, I have way more detailed classes and examples over on Patreon where I can talk about this live. But I'm showing an example of one color on the right with the Quinn magenta, and then on the left doing uh, real colors. But the first step when we're painting in watercolor is we're going to start with our lightest value, the tea to milk consistencies opacities. And then as things dry, we start bumping up the contrast by adding our medium values, more of the milk to cream, anywhere mixtures in between because we have such a wide range all the way from tea to cream to butter we don't necessarily have to choose a specific one because with watercolor we have the beauty of um, things blending together and layering together to become more of a gradient so as i'm adding these colors i can go back and with a damp brush kind of blend everything together but we start with our light values work in some medium values and then we can go in with our even darker values into the cream. So something I like to do is I work light to medium, ranges in between there, and then my darker values of cream start to really amplify where the shadows are. Especially if you know your light source, this is really important. The main thing is we just cannot lose our light and medium values with watercolor, and if you can maintain them, it's just magic when you get done with your entire painting. Watercolor has a lot of ugly stages. The first few stages where you are painting your light to medium values, it just looks weird. But then when you start adding in these darker values of cream and butter, the paintings start to pop and transform. So here I'm still only in the cream phase, but my last phase is adding a very thick, dark, buttery texture to just make those shadows really pop. When you can increase the contrast between light to dark, everything looks more complete, uh, more rounded, a lot more depth. And so you can add in these darker values, adding in details, and the darker values are going to be the least amount, just a tiny bit for the leaves. Uh, the shadows, little texture on the trees, a tiny bit of grass, and you can just see how even in one color, everything really pops. So this is another fun exercise when you can paint something all in one color to see the values and then paint it in, you know, true colors to see how it's different. And honestly, painting in one color is so much easier sometimes because you don't have to worry about all of the different colors. But this is how everything starts to look when you have all of your values in place. It looks kind of real. I love the style of it. And this will just really improve your watercolor paintings. You won't have to add anything else in. And it looks better when you don't add anything else in. I hope the tea to butter consistency comparison is a lot more clear for you now as it is for me too, because really the goal is to learn how to create these consistencies so that we're creating the right values and making beautiful watercolor paintings with our value scale for years to come. I'll see you all next time. Bye.